Hey guys, how's it going? In today's video, I'm gonna be working on the containers in the front entryway. So the big black square ones that have the obelisk, is that right? Obelisk, ob obelisk. I think I'm gonna leave those as the centerpiece. I actually had planned on picking up a couple of lollipop crab apples this spring to use as my centerpiece because I thought those containers could pull it off and I thought it would be kind of a unique look up there and I completely forgot about it when all the trees came in. So I think I'm just gonna stick with what's in there and just fill in around it. And I'm kind of excited about the blend of plants. The theme this year is color. So I'm going to maybe, this is my only maybe plant, put in some plain the blue salvia kind of toward the center because those will be the biggest of all of these. I know for sure I want to use some of this Caroly Petite Gara because this is an amazing plant, you guys. And it never really, like, to be honest with you, never looks like much when you pick it up, kind of like this. But they get thick and gorgeous and full of these blooms all summer long, like through frost. They're amazing. And then a mix of these Super Tunias. So we've got Royal Velvet, Super Tunia Honey, and Royal Magenta. I just think it's a really fun, kind of tropical looking blend. And then depending on how long that takes because Benjamin's napping right now, I'm actually not gonna even worry about setting up a bunch of cameras. I'm just gonna set up one and we're gonna get this done. Um, I'm gonna hopefully work on another set of containers like to the entryway of our Versailles garden. I've got some blue spruce in there right now and some other perennials and stuff I can pop out and put some new stuff in. And then I need to put together my mom's Mother's Day gift. Um, so really fun projects today. So let's just head up to the front of the property. I think I've got everything I need in here. I've got some fresh potting mix because the bulbs were already removed that were in those containers and a friend is actually taking all of those to his house. And then I'm thinking about whoo, changing out the drip I have in there to this with the emitters every six inches rather than using like the separate emitters. I don't know. Just because I usually have to put in like seven or eight emitters in that pot and I still feel like I have kind of bad coverage in there. And I have to say that buying this gator was the absolute best purchase that we have about ever made on this property. I say that about the greenhouse too. But listen, it's so quiet. All you can hear is the gravel. Oh, can you see the delphiniums? They're all blooming right now and they look gorgeous and a fresh layer of mulch was just put down over here as well. It's a great day out here. Except for when I see new gopher mounds. How dare. I think I'm gonna shut those doors quick because that's not super pretty. So these are the black containers I was talking about that we've planted up many times. This is actually not the entrance to our property anymore, but until this front fence goes out, it still looks like the entrance and we still have drip run to them. So I figured why not? I think it'll be really pretty here. And since we're not gonna be doing the hay racks this year because of potential projects that are gonna happen here, um, I just wanted to kind of go all out with color. So, I mean, look at that, look at that in the sun. I think it's going, going to be really, really pretty up here. And it looks like Aaron already made it out here and put some fresh soil, top layer of soil on there for me because we dug out, you know, the reservoir in here is actually not very big. It's built up, so there's actually air down here and the reservoir is about here. And I think we dug out about halfway and then he added more in. And then the drip system is gonna work a little bit differently this year. This was where the hay racks ended and then it went down and it went underneath or it does still, it goes underneath here. We trenched, Aaron and I trenched it and put it in a pipe underneath the lane here. And then it comes back up and feeds this pot and the hay rack that used to be there. So since we still have this infrastructure, this is where it will end. I'm gonna cap it here, punch in with quarter inch and draw it up into here. And then the drip will still go across here and we'll still use everything that's here. Cause you can see here's where it comes up. So I'll kind of do the same thing. I'll put an elbow in down here and take off behind the dumpster to tap into one of our new zones that's over there. If that makes sense, hopefully it does. Either way, they'll still be on drip. That's all that matters. Forgot my Falcos, dang it. Thank goodness for the gator.
right, so I got the drip done in the first container, and right as I was finishing that up, a little bit of real talk here, Aaron called me because Benjamin woke up from his nap early and just kind of lost it, and he does not do that. I mean, like, three times since he was born, he's done that. And so Aaron called me, he didn't know what to do, so I went inside, and so I've been in there for the last three hours or so, just comforting Benjamin and playing with him. He's happy right now, playing with his cars. Uh, but that means I'm not gonna get nearly as much done as I thought I was going to, and that's totally fine. I'm going to finish planting up these containers, and then I do have to go water the greenhouse. It's kind of my end of the day chore. So let me show you this irrigation setup. And there she be. I don't know if this is going to be awesome or not, but I initially, I initially left it where it kind of stubbed up and cut off and I tapped in right there and then I got to looking at it and thought, no, I can just go to the access pipe down here and eliminate an extra elbow because the half inch came here and then came up with an elbow. And if you can reduce the amount of times you elbow or tee off, um, when you're going in a straight line like that. I think the flow is better. Anyway, so I just tapped in right here to this line and the black tubing goes up the back and then converts right here into the drip tubing that has the holes every six inches. And I have 20 emitter holes in this container. And I imagine once I have everything planted, I'll probably shift it around and decide if I need to add more or if that's okay. So anyway, I think it'll be good. So now in an effort to save some time, I'm just gonna set the camera up and I'm going to plant this one. And then we're gonna do irrigation and plant up the second one and then I'll give you a tour. boy here he comes Benjamin hey hi baby did you have a rough nap time yeah I love you yeah you got your tractors good you want to come see the flowers okay 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 come on oh look at the view right now here comes Aaron the lighting is real pretty right now since we're getting into evening we're getting into evening now bud yeah. Do you see those big purple flowers right there, buddy? In the flower bed over the fence? Uh oh. Aren't those pretty? Yeah. Hey. Oh, Daddy has your shades, bud. You wanna put these on? He's got a messy mouth. There we go. Have you been eating some dinner? No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come check out the color, Aaron. I think you will approve. One? No, I haven't yet. But I ran it to both oh, both containers. Good. Not fun oh, and bright. Fun. Yeah, it's kind of a different mix. I did one, one playing the blues in the middle. You're gonna keep the yeah obelisk. The obelisk. Yes, I am. Thank you very much. I think it'll be good for that playing the blues because you know how when they get really big, they need almost need to be staked, uh -huh. uh, especially up here with all the wind. So this will kind of act as its staking system. Yeah, like a sure. like a peony cage kind of. You know, when we had the hay racks, we probably could have used this drip tubing instead of the emitters. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how it works. Yeah, it will be. Because it, it may not be better. But it might be awesome. But it might be awesome. And way it easier. It is less work to install. Yes, yes, for sure. Okay, so what I did is I cut this off down here. Uh-huh. And then just tapped in. Sure. And then I did pretty much the same thing. So we just need to straight couple into this piece. So guys, if you take a look, Aaron, would you mind shading it? You can see it coming out of the second pot here. The black tubing comes down and just connects to the half inch black poly, which stops right here. So we'll put a straight coupler in here because basically that half inch piece of poly goes from here to where I ended it right behind that pipe there. So I'll put a straight coupler in and run black poly 
we'll kind of scoot the gravel out of the way and do a trench, a small trench to run the black poly all the way over to this new box right over here, which is semi hidden by this thick rock. We've got an extra zone in there that we can tap into. In fact, I think it's one of these. That's where we control it. So yeah, I think this blend of plants is gonna be really fun to watch grow. I think it's gonna look just really bright and stunning, really. I mean, cause you've got some jewel tones going on there. I think we'll have the wispiness and then we'll have um, this kind of poking up through the center. And then of course, I mean, we've got the drama right here with our vertical interest. So it'll just be really fun and different. And honestly, I have to admit, I'm excited we're not doing the Hayward Project this year. And that's only because we have so many other things going on this year. Had we not decided to tackle anything on the new property, I probably would have said, let's just like keep doing all of our normal projects. But you know, you have to kind of eliminate some things in order to do other things. We do anyway, I mean, because we can't do it all. Um, and we are going to be doing videos this next week because I think water is going to be hooked up at the very beginning of next week so we can start planting, which is super exciting. So anyway, that's where I'm going to end this video. I'm kind of bummed we didn't get as much stuff done as I thought we were going to do, but you know what? Benjamin's pouring me a drink right now. Thanks, buddy. You got it really full. Yeah, you did a good job. We'll just get those things done this weekend and I'll try to take video of them when I get them done. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye. Oh baby, look at what you just did. Did you did you pour my drink in my cup? Oh, I did. You did. Hey Benjamin, look. Great job. Thank you. Yeah. You are so helpful. Should I take a drink of it now? No. Uh oh. Oh, is it gucky? The water's on. Yeah, the water's on. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Mmm. It's extra tasty. Oh! Smart. There was some in there. Okay, guys, just kidding. I ended up having a little bit of extra time, so I got the whole greenhouse watered, but I really wanted to show you what I'm putting together for my mom for Mother's Day uh, because I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm gonna potter up a little collection of ferns. I went down to the garden center today and picked up all of these containers. In fact, she saw me doing it, but she had no idea what I was doing it for. I kind of went with all grays, and all of them are a different style-ish but I think they'll all look really pretty grouped together on a table somewhere. So this one right here, the biggest one, is a hardy Japanese holly fern. Let's see if I can get it to focus here. Ooh, there we go. And it is a zone six through nine. Really beautiful. That one is gonna go down in here, something like that, except for potted in soil. And then this one here, in this beautiful little container, this one's from Unique Stone. This is a heart's tongue fern. Zone five through nine. So this one's even more winter hardy. I love the strap leaves. It looks like a bird nest fern. I don't know enough about ferns. Is it a type of bird nest fern? Anyway, then this is called a Dice's hybrid fern. Let's take that tag out of there. Uh, this one's a zone six through eight. These should, should technically survive our winters based on the temperature average of the last couple of winters for us. And then in this one, which this is a beautiful, it's like kind of, I don't know what they call that. Scalloped pot. This is a soft shield fern. Uh, zone six through nine. I love these, the little fronds. They are so pretty. And then this one is called a holly fern. Oh, this is zone eight through 10. So this is our only one that will have to come inside, but she does pretty good with ferns inside. So I'm just gonna work on getting these all potted up. It should only take just a few minutes and then I'll show you what they all look like, kind of grouped together how I imagine it. And there they are, all potted. Aren't those pretty? I really, really, really wanted to keep those ferns. So I feel like this is a sacrificial gift in a way. <laughs> <laughs> I think she'll really, really like it though. Each one of them looks really good in the container. I'm super happy about that. Like each one of them suits its container is what I mean. So that is gonna conclude today's video. I'm really glad I had time to eke out one more project this evening. I might even have a chance to start trimming a little bit of boxwood. I gotta go see what the boys are doing though. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching again and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.